The Future of American Orchestras, a discussion of the problems and prospects facing American symphony orchestras, their music, and their audiences' expectations. This timely conversation examines trends and challenges facing youth, community, collegiate, and professional orchestras. In this segment, panelists discuss what universities could be doing to prepare musicians for the future of the American orchestra. As we prepare students to be a part of this transformation and to be ready to not just uh, be dragged along by change, but to create that change and help encourage that change. Uh, what are we doing uh, that we're doing, we're doing well? My mother would always say, start with the good. What are we currently doing that we're doing very well in terms of preparing people for that? And uh, what could we do differently to prepare our students to really innovate and uh, assist this field in uh, addressing these very important and lofty goals? I think what we're doing well is reflected in what Edward said before. Orchestras are getting better and better because we're training people how to play their instruments well. Doing that really well. I frankly think with most American conservatories it tends to stop there. We're not actually training them to think about these issues. Um, we're not training them to think that the visual matters. Uh, when I wanted to put risers in at Orchestra Hall in Chicago, I had big protest from the musicians, and I said, well, the problem is everybody on the main floor, which is like 1,100 seats, can't see anything other than the socks of the first row of string players. And the answer I got is, so what? what why does that matter? We actually need to start talking about it. When you talked about the Venezuela Orchestra, one of the big differences about that kind of orchestra, but even an orchestra like the Berlin Philharmonic, is you look at them and they look like they love what they're doing. You look at most American orchestras and they're doing a job. They're sitting there and they're taught by their teachers often in the conservatories, don't move. Like, I mean, there are some teachers that were very famous about that. Don't move, just play. And that's actually got to change. Music should make you move physically and you should show to the audience that you're enjoying what you're doing. I used to get letters at the Chicago Symphony from children after children's concerts. We loved the music, it was a very good show. Why do the musicians look angry? <laughs> I wanna share a quote with you actually, um, because I think this speaks to why the musicians look angry. We, we did a, partnership with the La Jolla Playhouse, which is uh, one of two Tony Award-winning theaters in San Diego. And uh, Memphis, the, the Broadway-winning Tony show this year, started at La Jolla Playhouse. The same director produced A Midsummer Night's Dream this summer. And he asked if San Diego Youth Symphony would partner with the Playhouse, um, have some of our most advanced students and alumni sit side by side with the professional union musicians to create an orchestra to play Mendelssohn's music plus new music written by the theatrical composer Mark Bennett. So I just uh, got this email two days ago from one of our students who participated in that production, played both on the stage in the quartet and then was also in the pit with the full orchestra. And he says, being a performance major at a conservatory for the past three years taught me how to play the clarinet. As we've heard, that's where the focus is. But the experience is emotionally and physically exhausting. Admittedly, I was tired and beat down as a musician. This internship made me fall in love with being a performer all over again. This is a 21-year-old young man. We work specifically on public speaking, mock auditions, mentoring, uh, all this in preparation for the future life in music, for whatever their path is. So we have begun to do this, to do more than just teach orchestra. I am an orchestra player. I, I tend to lead my students in this path, but any path they want to go on, I will take them as far as I can. I have can. a conducting student here at the Hart School, and I, uh, it's, it's a very awesome responsibility because, I mean, I've already kind of thrown him to the wolves by giving him Debussy's Prelude to the Afternoon of the Fawn, you know, right out of the box, because it's a very difficult piece to conduct. But how do I tell, prepare Joseph for all the things that await him in the profession? 
that you don't learn in school. For example, when I auditioned for the Pittsburgh Symphony for a, res for a staff position there, they asked me to introduce uh, a movement of WC Nocturnes as if all of the people in the audience were eight and nine-year-olds. And then they said, okay, do it again and introduce the piece, same piece, as if you are speaking to high school students. Okay. All right, do it again, and now you're speaking to an adult audience, mostly made up of adults who know nothing about classical music. Well, I had to give three speeches about the same piece. And, and I'm think, I mean, I'm thinking out loud now with you, I have, to, I have to present this to Joe. I have to tell him this is what he has to learn how to do. I mean, I also found out he hasn't studied counterpoint, so you can believe me, I'm going to be really grilling him about that. <laughs> but, but he... It, he has to learn all of those extra musical aspects of not just a, not just a musical career or a performing career, as, 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 as Janet and David have so eloquently described, if you're a player, but for what awaits a conductor, a young conductor, because in our auditions, and this has been happening for years, we've been having to do all these things that now we want to see perhaps happen in auditions for players. One second. We've, we've just begun at, at uh, Roosevelt, uh, Chicago College of Performing Arts. Just this semester, we've begun a requirement. Any level, you're a student, you give a recital, you will talk about the music. That's, you, will not be, you will not give that recital without presenting your program in some way. You can talk about the music, you can talk about why you put the program together, but you have to start to get comfortable speaking as opposed to this anonymous wall that has always existed between audience and performer. What type of education do we want our students to receive? In addition to the tradition, the great repertoire, wonderful experience with that, what about these extra musical responsibilities, which increasingly our field is saying is going to be and is currently expected of artists? You no longer can just wait by the phone for your manager to call you to play the next piece. You need to be engaged in your own uh, career, as is also exemplified by the blogs that you'll read of many orchestras as they're on European tours, where the musicians are people. You're hearing about their experience. So we're really excited to be a part of that. And um, unless there are some other issues we wanted to go into, Dalug, you had something I just you wanna, wanted to add? I want to add one more thing, which is, um, w would almost be heretical for a conservatory or performance-oriented conservatory to consider, but the majority of the students that are coming through, particularly for orchestral work, are far outnumbering the, su the supply of actual professional opportunities that exist for them. So I, even though these students are coming into this environment to learn to play professionally, it, I believe it's incumbent upon the university to help them understand not just that, oh, there are so few jobs, but also begin to think about what other areas in the musical life of their community they may want to participate in. And exposure to those areas, sort of the, as it's been described, um, is essential so that as they're coming out into the real world, they, they can actually choose a direction for themselves that's rooted in an understanding that they already have. They don't have to now spend time figuring out what the landscape is like around them because they've been in such a rarefied environment. If you can join me in a round of applause for each member of our panel. David Cizak, Luke, Edward, Janet, Henry. I think you guys did good, that was great. <laughs>